tea drinker, not coffee. Yep. Has it always been that way? Yeah, I've never drunk coffee. Really? Yeah, yeah. You know, I had about a half a cup of coffee at a Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> maybe 10 years ago, and I'm still trying to work it off. So. <laughs> it just didn't have a taste. For it. That's right. No, no, I like the taste. It's, it's too much it's of a jolt. Yeah. 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 So you take a kind of a light tea. Too. Oh, yeah. Very, very. Uh, Thin. Kind of pass the tea bag through it twice just to give it a little flavor, That's and it. then I'm done. So how do you get by on the campaign trail without caffeine? You know, it's a fight from the heart, and I wake up every day ready to jump out of bed and get into it and stay in it all day. And I get to meet lots of people who, you know, they really will be touched by what happens in the 2020 election. I actually will say I was speaking with voters last week and I asked them just kind of, you know, a normal reporter question. Sure. What matters to you most? Four people started crying when I asked that question and that has never happened to me in two decades of politics. You know, I, I do these selfie lines after town halls and uh, the number of people who come up to me, teachers, who will take my hand and say, uh, I work three jobs my second and third paychecks go entirely to trying to pay down my student loan debt. Mm. Please, please win and cancel student loan debt as I've promised to do. And these are people who work hard, who play by the rules, and have just discovered that the path has just gotten steeper and rockier. They just feel like they're sliding back no matter how hard they work. Is that one of the things that struck you most in a national campaign or? So I, I have to say that part has really been about my life's work. You know, I was a teacher. I, I have been in elected office or running for elected office, I think less than anyone else who's in this, uh, this campaign, including people who are a lot younger than I am. And, and I spent my time studying what was happening to working families in this country. And it really is seeing about how America's middle class has been hollowed out. And that the fundamental reasons for this go back to this notion of whose side government is on. Back when I was a girl, my daddy had a serious heart attack. And we didn't have much when it happened, but boy, after that and he was out of work, we were just turned upside down mm -hmm. financially. My mother, who'd been a stay-at-home mom, got a minimum wage job at Sears. And that minimum wage job paid the mortgage, it covered the utilities, it put groceries it on the enough. table. It was enough. Today, a minimum wage job in America won't keep a mama and a baby out of poverty. And the reason for that difference is back when I was a girl, the question that was asked in Washington is where do we set the minimum wage to make sure that a family of three can survive, get a foothold mm -hmm. in America's middle class? It's who government works for. And that's what drew me into the political end of the fight, to say I want a government that works for families, not a government that's just out there working for big corporations. <laughs> You're very open about a lot of your growing up and stories. I always like to ask if there's something you think voters don't know about you yet. Many of them may not know that when I got my first uh, teaching job in law school, I was young, I had two little kids. I was married to someone who didn't want to be part of helping on this. And so, you know, I was doing dinner late and laundry at 11 o'clock at night. And, holding it all together, but the thing that nearly wrecked me was childcare. Hmm. And uh, one night, I'd been teaching for, gosh, about five or six months, and my Aunt B, who's an 86-year-old widow, called me, said, how you doing, honey? She was living in Oklahoma, I'm down in <laughs> South Texas. I said, fine, and then started to cry. And before I even knew what I was thinking about, I said, I'm gonna quit. Hmm. Now, I love this job, but I couldn't do the childcare. We had just been through one thing after another. My Aunt B said, well, I can't get there tomorrow, but I can come on Thursday. Mm. And she arrived with seven suitcases and a Pekingese named Buddy, <laughs> and she stayed for 16 years. Wow. And it's one of the reasons childcare is such a passion for me. If you could leave voters with a one-sentence message about your campaign, what would it be? I'll fight as hard for your family as I fought for mine. Senator Elizabeth Warren, thank it's you so much. It's good to see you.